This video was produced by the Top Cut. Be sure to check out thetopcut.net, your home for Pokemon TCG tournament coverage, professional game analysis, and interviews with the best players in the world. Thanks for watching. And here we go, game three between Nick Capobianco and Dylan Bryan. I'm Josue Crims Rohanu. With me is Kyle Pukasukovic, and we are in the top four of the Pennsylvania uh, Regional Championships for the Pokemon TCG. Yeah, Nick won a pretty convincing game one. Dylan won a pretty convincing game two. And we will see if Nick can move on with his rogue KMT deck versus Dylan's CMT deck. Of course. Don't you think you're clever right now? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it just kind of works out. Uh, yeah, 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 that was pretty clever. Um, so we are seeing Dylan set up. Did Nick uh, Mulligan here? Yeah, Nick Mulligan, so he's going to shuffle in. Grab a new hand of seven. Dylan will start off with an extra card. And he gets... I'm sure he's still kind of shaking his head when he sees a handful of water energy and a crushing hammer and a super scoop up. So Look at Nick trying to sneak in that extra card. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Keep his opponent honest. Oh, there's another Mulligan. So that's two Mulligans in a row. Um, one thing I found interesting, and I mean, I guess you might not, but I find it interesting that he puts his deck to the, to the left and his discard pile to the right. I don't know if you've seen that yet, yeah. but he keeps his discard pile on the right, his deck on the left. That's, I have no idea how these people, uh, do this all the time. Everybody has, finds new and innovative ways to set up their, their playing field, but that just yeah. gives me a headache. He's clearly not following the guidelines of the play mat that says deck and discard pile. Um, he's placing he's his deck sure. in the prize cards, so he's just preferring to play with, you know, a lot more prize cards than normal. <laughs> That's basically what it is. <laughs> um, and he is in danger of getting decked here. Uh, so we do see him start off with his Mewtwo. He does get to go first, which is a nice advantage, unfortunately. Uh, well, actually, I guess starting off with Mewtwo isn't even that big of a deal, considering the fact that you're all of your poke. This is probably your fastest attacker, even. Yeah, so give this is yes, he sure, uh, a gigantic feature. risk from Nick. He puts a double colorless on his Mewtwo, and he's like, whatever, I'm just going to X-Ball. But if Dylan... I mean, this is the one deck you really don't want to do this against. Because Dylan runs so many switches, Sky Hero Bridges. He runs three Mewtwo's, four double colorless, and I'm sure at least two or three plus powers. If he gets Mewtwo, double colorless, plus power, you are down two prizes on the first turn of the game. And that's not a spot you want to be in. Oh, yeah? Well, he gets to deal 40 damage on his first turn. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure that's worth it. <laughs> that's true. Um, clearly a very risky play. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll go so far as to say that it's, it is a mistake. But he does get a Cure Meag, so at least he's not going to lose if he uh, if his opponent does happen to have this play and there goes that uh that end to the discard pile on the wrong side of the field um but he'll definitely be down quite a bit we see the skyro bridge come down immediately dylan yeah. dylan's playing his hand really fast he knows that that's something that he's going to be aiming for if he can somehow get his uh his mewtwo with a double colors in play yeah, we see a smeargle come down you know he's playing really fast and uh i think part of that could be time is probably getting low we're probably around the 50-minute mark. This is 60 minutes, best two out of three. So there might not be a whole lot of time left for this game. And Dylan obviously knows that. And going second, he wants as much time as possible to play out a full game here. It looks like he does not get the Mewtwo, though. That's correct. Now, with that said, even though you are correct, Dylan has the faster deck. And having only 10 minutes gives Dylan a huge advantage over Nick. Because Nick, uh, I mean, he doesn't take uh, prizes very fast. Obviously he can if uh, uh, with with Mewtwo because Mewtwo kind of doesn't actually care what kind of a deck you're playing. It'll be aggressive no matter what. But Nick's deck is a lot slower than Dylan's um, Celebi powered energy accelerating deck. So we'll have to see if uh, if Nick, Dylan's going to be Nick. He is one. holding on to a double callus in his hand. He doesn't know whether or not to attach the second one at all. He puts that uh, So that would have been Nick. that would have been the epitome of. Absolute risk <laughs> versus reward. Greed, um, baby. Greed. Greed uh, is good, if you've learned anything in life. <laughs> so we see a Professor Oak's new theory off Speak of Nick. for yourself. <laughs> so we see a new theory off of Nick. Uh, decides not to make the aggressive play here and have an X-Ball for 80 on turn two, which is ridiculous if you think about it. Yeah. So sick. 
uh, X ball for forty, then X ball for eighty. You know, this is just turn two. Not a big deal. I'm only me two EX. Um, <laughs> yeah, with 170 hit point Pokemon, yeah, not bad. Yep. <laughs> but he he hits a Professor X new theory. I'd like to see him. Actually, to be honest, he's got it. He's in great shape. Uh, I there's not too much I'd like to see off of him. Um, maybe maybe speed up his play a little. But I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm not the biggest uh, or the best person <laughs> to, to advocate that advice. Yeah. So he sees it. We see a Terrakian, and he does just X ball here. Um, so still, Nick has not taken a prize, and there's that plus power and a Mewtwo. So this could be a huge, huge blow for Nick. Oh, he, that's what I wanted to say. I wanted <laughs> to see a Mewtwo out of Nick. I wanted to see Nick drop a Mewtwo into play here. Uh, I would have actually liked to see him just retreat the Mewtwo. This is still a huge risk. There's no reason you need to be doing 40 to a Smeargle for... I mean, what what advantage does that give you? So I probably would have just liked to see him switch the Mewtwo there, or retreat it, rather. Get the energy off it so you're not vulnerable to an X-Ball like this. And if Dylan hits a double call this, this is two turns in a row where he's got a big shot to take the first two prizes. And if you're Nick, I don't know why you give your opponent an, an opportunity for something like this. Do we see the double call here? No, I don't think we did. No, we don't. Uh, actually, yes, we do. Oh, wow. So, so uh, we are going to see a knockout here. Um, dual ball as well. Dual ball not quite as necessary, but he does get a heads. Probably going to find a Celebi here. Or another Mewtwo. Mewtwo. So that's fine. That, that's actually a really good play as well because it forces his opponent to not only have a Mewtwo return, oh, but see. also kind of hope that he can't return the KO on his Mewtwo. What's he doing there? Another thing is I don't think Nick plays plus power, does he? Uh, I was actually wondering that myself. I don't know if he plays many or any in that case. I can't remember if I've seen one yet, but there's probably one, at least, every deck, except for, like, Trainer Lock decks and Durant, pretty much play plus power. It's just too good not to play, especially with Junk Arm. I would be very surprised if he doesn't play any plus power. Well, even assuming he does play one, the fact that he needs to draw this one plus power in order to really give himself a shot against his opponent's Mewtwo... Uh, ignoring any celebration wind um, shenanigans is really telling of the fact that Nick's in a pretty tough spot here. Yeah, and this That's is why. Lightly. Yeah, this is why you don't want to just X ball for forty against a random Pokemon. Mewtwo is very strong, but it's very fragile at the same time, and we're seeing it right here. Dylan's just gonna get two free prizes basically. Nick didn't even take a single prize with his Mewtwo, and uh, he's going to be in a ton of trouble in this game. That is a great point. We see one heads off of the dual ball here, so he's not going to be able to get the full celebration win Mewtwo combo. Um, I don't know if he even wants to. Yeah, that's true. He His opponent already has a Mewtwo in play, has a Celebi as well, which he also dropped into play, so he's going to be able to get return KO almost immediately. Um, here, he has to just accept the fact that he's going to be uh, behind on prizes, going to be two prizes down, and he's not going to really be able to take any cheap prizes except for that Celebi on the bench. Uh, right. and, um, it's just not looking very good for, for Nick, no matter what. What I meant, I don't think he wants to. I think his plan this turn is going to be to just hit the Mewtwo for 60, discard the double colorless, and put Dylan in a rough spot. He's also going to end him to four cards, so maybe that Mewtwo gets stuck in the active spot with no way to retreat or anything like that. And if that's the case, he can actually attack for 120 next turn uh, and knock out a Mewtwo with a Kirim EX, which would be a pretty big deal. Yeah, ideally that will happen for him. That's that's his new plan of attack. That's his, uh, his best option here. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what Dylan can do here or what Dylan decides to do here because Dylan does have a lot of options. Yeah. He, he has a, a Juniper in his hand, but he's got two grass that's kind of costly to dump out of his hand, a catcher as well. But it might be worth it just to go for it. Yeah, I think you absolutely do for here. Yeah, I don't know if he should attach an energy first, but he no. can always get a switch and then forest breath, so maybe that's not a bad idea. Yeah, I, I would prefer to him to have him just Juniper here. But either way, that's not that big of a deal. He can still uh, switch his way out of this. Yeah. And uh, really, he doesn't want to put down any special energy if he doesn't have to because of frozen wings on the Kirim EX, so maybe uh, a little bit better that he decides to just go for the basic energy route, and I gotta say, I'm getting kind of antsy to see if Bouffalant is gonna 
going to get in there this game. You can't see this, but I'm really shaking my head right now. <laughs> this uh, is what's going through my mind. When is Buffalant going to get his time to shine? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our national champion <laughs> of multiple years. Uh, uh, so that, we, That's incorrect, but we'll move whatever. on. You know what I mean. <laughs> uh, we see a dual ball here, I believe. And did it miss twice? It did. I think in the clutch, dual ball has let Nick down. Wow. Um what do you want to see Nick do here? Uh, he, he was definitely going for Shaman to move the energy off. He does have a super scoop up in his hand, so that's obviously what he's going to be trying to do with it. Yeah, tried to do this turn. Um, so I don't know where he's going to move the energy with Shaman, but he is going to go for for that combo. All right, so we get double heads here off of his dual ball this time, which is fine. This is actually extremely good for him. He's going to find a Shaman, and he's probably going to be finding a Mewtwo here. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that was his best-case scenario, but it all comes down to getting heads on the Super Scoop-Up, which actually he's going for another Kirami X, so maybe he does not want to go for Mewtwo. Yeah, now he's just going to be going the... I'm um, going to try to 60 you to death. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I think in a perfect world for Nick, he um, moves the energy to his Kirami X, he gets heads on the super scoop up and then gets a catcher for that bench Mewtwo. He attaches another water and hits it for 120. Gets a knockout that way and Dylan can't really respond to a Kirami X with a one hit knockout. That's pretty difficult. So that's probably the route he's going to go for. Big flip, gets tails. Uh, yeah, he has a catcher on that Mewtwo. Um, that's a really unfortunate tails for him, but he does have a Juniper to really find another way out of this. Uh, at this point, he's even going to be willing to have a, take a switch here. Um, he's got another super scoop up in his hand, though. And, uh, that's a crushing hammer first, though. Uh, I'm not really sure what this crushing hammer's for, but I guess we'll have to see if it hits or not. Uh, does not. So all these flip cards are letting Nick down in the clutch. Let's see if this one does, too. That one's heads. All right, so, so he gets he rid of his Kirim EX on the active spot, activates his benched Kirim, and has a water energy, too. He top decked the water energy off of his Juniper, so he's going to be able to knock out this Mewtwo. Very fortunate turn of events for, for Nick, even though he didn't really get the flips he wanted. Yeah, and he will tie this game up and put Dylan in a pretty tough spot in terms of what he wants to do. Putting Mewtwo up is kind of risky, because then Nick can respond with his Mewtwo, and then Nick will end up taking the lead. So, unless Dylan can find a way <laughs> to knock out this Kirami X in one hit, which... Eh... Uh, Probably, well, if he gets a grass and a double call us, he can actually pull that off. Mm -hmm. But That's exactly what he needs. Yeah, so he actually just needs a grass because he has a double call us in his hand. Attaches the double call us, so he's going to be going for it. Unless he decides not to attach it. He's kind of got it in his hand, still, not, still wondering. Okay, there it is. Attaches it and goes for a junk arm, probably going for his poke gear. I think there's energy retrieval, so yeah, he's going to go for oh. that. Okay, so he guarantees himself to knock out on Nick's side of the play or side of the field. And that puts Nick at zero energy again because he has no EXP share in play. And Nick's counting, double <laughs> counting. Oh, man. It adds up. How do you deal 180 damage? That's so <laughs> not fair. Yep. This is the power of Mewtwo. But if Nick can get his own Mewtwo this turn, Dylan is down to very little in his Ooh. hand. And there it is. That is big. <laughs> that is huge. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, Nick actually has a return knockout here. Going to put himself as two prizes as well. And he's going to force his opponent to deal with his Mewtwo. This is so interesting. I really thought that this game was going to go to time, but then I forgot. Uh, then again, I guess I forgot just how strong Mewtwo actually is. <laughs> yeah, this is coming down to the wire. This is uh, a heavy-hitting back-and-forth game with 170 and 180 hit point basics getting knocked out in one hit. I'm shaking my head right now, um, but that is the state of the game. Yeah, so... Uh, Nick's going to play Professor Oak's New Theory, get a new hand of six. Doesn't actually need anything anymore. He's got everything he needed already, but now he's just going to want to make sure that, um, well, I guess, ideally, he's going to try to find himself an N or something like that to be able to seal the deal on his following turn. Um, yeah, now, the, the problem for Nick is that, even though he'll go down to two prizes, Dylan has no EXs left on his field, which means he can actually attack with Buffalant and then Tornadus. And knock out a Mewtwo in two hits, and he can win that way. So Correct. Dylan doesn't even need a Mewtwo in order to win this game. And uh, Nick, he is 
really bent on getting something with this dual ball. It's so we get it one heads here. We're going to see what he's actually going for. That's why I would have liked to see him uh, – or that's why I, I do want to see him play an in on his falling turn because that's going to kind of get rid of the – and I shouldn't say get rid, but it's going to give him a good shot of getting uh, his opponent off of the uh, Pokemon catcher range. So he really wanted that Smeargle just for insurance if Dylan were to play N. I don't know if that was worth playing a junk arm just to get the Smeargle into play, but he thought it was worth it. So he went for it, and he's going to have a switch as well, so he'll be able to portrait. You know what this also means, though? Most importantly is that he now has two Pokemon on the field that can get one, uh, one-shotted one by the Tornadus. Mm -hmm. So that's also kind of like a double-edged sword. Um Honestly, I would have preferred that he didn't find the Smeargle because now the Tornadus is not going to be able to, or at that point, the Tornadus wouldn't be able to take the two prizes he needed or the, or the Bufalon to them. So uh, now I got to wonder, is it time for Bufalon? Well, there's one heads here, so it might not be. Might no. have a, <laughs> might have enough resources to just be able to knock out this Mewtwo right here and now. Uh, he definitely does not in his hand, so uh, he's really going to be dependent on portrait this turn i think to get, just to get a supporter if he doesn't he's going to be reduced to using revenge for 90 i don't really know what's left in his deck looks like there should be a view two left maybe a shaman ex i don't know if that's still in his deck but he's got to be running kind of low on options for attackers and he only gets one head so really not going to help him out here <sighs> we'll have to see he finds a tornadus um I'm not really sure uh, what exactly his plan of attack is here. I know that it revolves on, around Smeargle quite a bit, but other than that. I think it's coming down to Bufalot, man. And uh... I know you want it to come down to Bufalot, <laughs> but I know that he also wants to make it uh, not come down to Bufalot as much as possible. But we do see Professor Oak's new theory in Nick's hand, so Dylan's portrait is going to be big. Dylan hit that uh, that new theory that he actually really needed. And uh, there are two energy on the Bouffalant, so... I know I he's think... got to do it, but he didn't want to, all right? <laughs> uh, I disagree. I think he really wanted to. So, he will be able to revenge for 90 this turn. He has a catcher in his hand. He might decide to just take a knockout on Smeargle or something like that. I don't know if he wants to just do that or hit, ni hit Mewtwo for 90. Looks like he will go for the knockout just because he knows Nick plays Super Scoop Up, which... I can't really argue with, and it's going to come down to next turn. Can he draw another? Well, he needs a catcher and an attacker next turn, I think. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, that's why I didn't want to see him bench the Smeargle, but we'll have to see what it, what Nick can do about this. Well, he already Nick had the out there, so. Yeah, exactly, but that's only one prize. Now right. he gave his opponent two prizes. But now, um, um, in order for Nick to get a prize this turn, he's going to have to attach a third energy to his Mewtwo, which opens up the door for Dylan to get a knockout there. Exactly. So we'll have to see what Nick's uh, line of attack is here. Um, <laughs> decides to attach an energy to his Mewtwo. Uh, maybe. <laughs> oh, no, maybe not. So he, right now the Mewtwo's dealing 80 damage to the Bufalon. So he absolutely needs to be able to deal at least 10 more damage or, or 20 more damage. Um, the energy on the Mewtwo seems like the likeliest response because he needs a knockout. He has no choice. Uh, See, and just... if, if I'm Nick, I might, I don't know, it's tough because Dylan has a catcher you lose if he has a, if you attach the third energy and then he has the Mewtwo and two energy you lose, so there's really nothing you can do, but I might have just tried to get a catcher here and then try to super scoop up your Shaman off the field. Uh, you don't want to put Mewtwo with three energy in this case, it's so risky and Dylan did get that third Mewtwo out of his prizes, so he'll have that for next turn. Yeah, I, I think what Nick was thinking was his opponent didn't find, didn't go for the Mewtwo this last time. He went for Tornadus, which meant that he probably didn't have access to the Mewtwo. Maybe he thought that his opponent might only play two because we haven't seen it. all three Pokemon, all three Mewtwo's. I don't believe uh, in any single game yet from from Dylan, or maybe he just assumed that Dylan's Mewtwo was prized because absolutely he would have gone for the Mewtwo last turn if he had access to it. Obviously, he found the Mewtwo in his prizes, which is big, but Nick can't really know that. Um, but either way, I don't really like the fact that he would have to rely on the Super Scoop Up with your with your line of play there. So um, I'm happy with him doing this. And either way, he has to acknowledge the fact that he's not in the best of shape, but at least he can get a prize here and 
force his opponent to have a response, or else he's going to be able to take the game next turn. Yeah, it's interesting that Nick's deck pretty much just degenerated into Mewtwo Wars. And if I'm not mistaken, Dylan does have... Has it all. <laughs> yep. And that's the handshake. So Dylan did hit that Mewtwo off of his prizes. Very important. If he hadn't hit it, then that would have been it. Uh, if I mean, he had a 50, 50% chance of finding that Mewtwo. Well, you got to remember, but, Dylan does play the Shaman EX. So if he had that... Oh, that's absolutely off. correct. You're right. So. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, so either way, Dylan did find a way to pull this game off. Nick's deck, which was... I mean, in game one, we saw the beauty of it. We saw how the Kirim EX and the, the Crushing Hammers really kind of mess with your opponent's energy count. But then games two and game three, we saw that Nick wasn't able to play his uh, his style of play, and he actually had to go the CMT route. And the CMT player just did that better. So, um, yeah, we see Dylan Bryan advance to uh, the top two. We, uh, we see him advance to the finals, and we'll see how he does. Yeah, I agree. In that second and third game, Nick really just went into a Mewtwo war versus a deck that wants to get into a Mewtwo war, whereas his deck really doesn't. So he just kind of tried to play a, a game with the wrong deck. <laughs> and he didn't rely on his attackers. He went to Mewtwo, and it fell apart from there. So Dylan defies the odds again, moves on to the finals, and we'll see if he can cap off his magical run here at Philadelphia Regionals with a victory. Yep, you're absolutely right. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring that to you guys soon. Yep, so thanks for watching. We'll have the finals up somewhat soon. And we'll see you guys next time. See you later, guys.